shadow fall. The groom awakens. Stalking through the lightless tunnels of the cult's domain, Carvillian's warriors saw the battle scouring in bodies from the Ganga's ill-advised subterranean war. They knew that with every step they took through this ancient underworld, they came closer to their own battle with the lurking remnants of the Gene Stealer cult. Marseille Thrak crawled along an ancient stone pipe whose diameter was barely enough for her to pass along. The reductor saboteur propelled herself mostly with elbows and knees. She could see nothing in the crushing blackness. Others may have been terrified, claustrophobic, yet Thrick felt none of that. She sensed the touch of the star children upon her soul, and it brought her peace and purpose. The satchel of blasting charges strapped tight to her back clucked dully against the roof of the pipe as she squirmed along, a constant reminder of her mission. Thrak was past ready to use her bombs in anger against these intruders. It was the talent the Star Children had bestowed upon her, and she wished to slay the unbelievers in their name. At last the pipe ended, and Mercia slithered from its shattered end into a much larger space. She listened for a long moment then, having determined that she was alone, woke the Lumen Pack on her shoulder. It revealed a cavernous chamber, its floor slanted and broken, its doomed ceiling held aloft by four adamantine reinforced pillars. Freyak herself had emerged into a bone-dry depression that she realized must have once been an ornamental fountain. She was stood behind the remains of a huge statue, just a pair of sandal-clad feet leading up to shattered marble shins. Discarding her momentary stab of curiosity, Freya vaulted over the lip of the fountain and hastened across to the nearest of four pillars. This place would do nicely, she thought, as she set to work. No doubt the Star Children had known. Why else would they have guided her here? Thraig was still at her task some minutes later when she caught the distant thump of gunfire growing slowly closer. Less than a half mile distant through the ancient tunnels, the talons of the Emperor were unsheathed in fury. They had been deep into the labyrinth when waves of neophyte cultists burst from concealment to attack. Autoguns chattering, the Zeno cultists flung themselves at the invaders with no thought for their own lives. The contest was a horribly uneven one. Neophytes were punched from their feet and blown bodily apart by bolt rounds. They were flung against the walls, their innards pulverized by concussion grenades or their flesh ablaze with Promethean flames. Those few that got close to Carvillian's warriors were met by thrumming powered blades, expertly welded by superhuman warriors. They fell back, limbs and heads shorn off, fragile bodies bisected, and their insides splattered bloody up the tunnel walls. The violence was shocking in the confined space, a one-sided meat grinder that reduced hundreds of xenocultists to butchered meat in the space of a few moments. Two prosecutors fell as lucky autogun rounds found their mark. The searing beam of a mining laser stabbed out to decapitate Vexilla Avernius, prompting cries of fury from his fellow custodians. The invaders Lumen found a barricade stretched across the tunnel ahead, formed from heap chunks of ancient stonework and tight-packed rubble. Cultists thronged behind it, firing over the top at Carvillian's small force. Behind them was a high, dark archway, one they had clearly sought to defend. The psychokillium readings were still vague, hard to decipher amidst the sprawl of half-collapsed tunnels and crawl spaces, but they seemed to indicate that the Patriarch lay somewhere beyond the barricade. The Blade Champion did not hesitate. To him, all other foes were but obstructions on the path to his true quarry. 
Carvillian pounded down the tunnel, striking enemy projectiles from the air with his spinning blade before clearing the barricade in a powerful leap. He hit his first foe feet first and crushed the Xenocultist beneath his armored weight. Even as he landed, the Blade Champion's weapons licked out, claiming more heretic lives. As Cavillian wrought bloody carnage amidst the reeling neophytes, the rest of his force charged in behind him. The hilarious custodian smashed straight through the stone barricade. Witch seekers sent gouts of flame leaping over the obstruction to consume screaming xenocultists. Ranks devastated. Numbers thinning with horrifying rapidity, the last of the neophytes fell back, still firing into the chamber beyond the arch. Determined to purge the heretics and press on to their objective, Gavrilian and his warriors followed. They had time to see the slanted, ruptured floor, the towering column still holding up a domed ceiling, and the shattered remains of the statue rising from a dry fountain in one corner. Then, the charges detonated. The column shattered into spinning storms of shrapnel. Suddenly unsupported, the time-worn stonework of the ceiling groaned, then came thundering down in a devastating avalanche. There are many different gene steel cults, each with its own name and quirks. The cult of the pauper princes first arose upon the slum world of Chance's Vale. They spread rapidly through the sailing miners and ill-disciplined local defense regiments until they had virtually taken the planet over entirely. At the direction of their Nagus, Matrovich Tendark, they snuck cells upon the void ship just strength and carried their message to the stars. 